So the previous videos that we've looked at have shown us that knowing about the first derivative of a function is very useful, right? We get some information out of that. Um, so in particular, we know that when we're looking at the, the sign of a derivative, well, if it's positive, then we're looking at a graph where the tangent line has positive slope everywhere. Okay. And if the derivative is negative, right, so if f prime is less than zero, we're looking at tangent lines with negative slope. Okay. Um, so this tells us whether or not a function is increasing or decreasing, and it lets us track down things like the location of critical points, which are either a maximum or a minimum, because if our function goes from increasing to decreasing, we know that we have a maximum. If it goes from decreasing to increasing, we know that we have a minimum. All right. Um, so this is, uh, this is good. It tells us whether or not our function is increasing or decreasing. Um, but the problem is that f prime, it doesn't capture everything, right? Okay, in particular, there, there are more than, there's more than one way that a function might increase, right? Um, so here are two graphs, which are both portions of, of some function which is increasing on an interval. Um, that's the graph of an increasing function. That's also the graph of an increasing function, right? Because at any point on either graph, if I were to draw a tangent line, right, we can see that we have positive slope in each case. Okay? So these are both graphs of increasing functions right, on some interval. Um, but there, there's a significant difference between the two, right? And, and so the, the issue is that the first derivative, it basically is giving you information about, you know, um, locally when you approximate your graph by a line, right, by the tangent line, what's the slope of that line? Is it positive or is it negative, right? Um, the first derivative doesn't tell you anything about the way that your graph is curving, right? Is it curving up? Is it curving down, right? Um, so there's this question of how, how does your graph deviate from being a straight line, right? So if I'm at this point along that tangent line, right, for a small, there's a small portion of the graph there where I'm pretty close to the tangent. Uh, but then the graph starts to pull away. And so now the question is when the graph pulls away from the tangent, is it going to be pulling away and going up above the tangent or is it going to pull away and go below the tangent, right? Um, and we want to distinguish between these two properties. Okay, so this is one way that some people will, will define um, what it means for a graph to be concave up, okay? So a graph is going to be concave up on some interval if the graph lies above. its tangent lines, right? And the other possibility is referred to as concave down. And so your graph is concave down if it lies below its tangent line at every point, right? Um, so we can see that here. So Above the tangent line, looks like this. This is concave up, right? So we'll often abbreviate that with CU for concave up, okay? Below the tangent line, CD, okay? Um, you'll see that the graph lies, right? So we, it touches at just that one point, but everywhere else, the graph is below the tangent line, right? Um, now, the other thing that you can work out when you're, or another way you can define concave up, concave down, or another thing you can conclude from looking at these graphs is that 
if the graph lies above the tangent, well, then the slope has to be increasing as we move from left to right. So as I, as I move along, right, if I'm here and I want to pull up and away from the graph, right, then I need the slope to increase. So the slope has to increase, right? But the slope is given by the value of the first derivative, right? So concave up means that f prime is increasing, right? Concave down means that f prime is decreasing. All right. Um, well, we know what happens if a function is increasing or decreasing, right? We, we kind of have it right here. Um, the derivative of that function, if it's positive, then we know our function is increasing. If the derivative of a function is negative, we know our function is decreasing. So in this case, the function we're interested in is already a derivative, right? It's the first derivative. So the derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative. So saying that f prime is increasing is the same thing as saying that f double prime is positive, assuming the derivative exists, right? f prime decreasing, well, that's the same thing as saying that f prime is negative, okay? So we have these properties, concave up, concave down. And the way we determine these properties is by looking at not the first derivative, but the second, right? When the second derivative is positive, our graph is concave up. When the second derivative is negative, our graph is concave down. Um, also of interest is going to be the points at which we transition from being concave up to concave down. These are called points of inflection, right? Or inflection points. So inflection points, these are going to be the points where f double prime changes its sign, right? From positive to negative or from negative to positive. And of course, as long as that second derivative is continuous, we know what has to happen at a point where the, where the derivative changes sign, right? If it's going to switch from positive to negative or negative to positive, intermediate value theorem tells us that has to happen at a zero, right? Or, or possibly a place where the derivative is undefined, right? So when we're looking for these inflection points, we're looking for points where either f double prime is equal to zero or possibly points where f double prime is undefined. Okay? So if we want to analyze the concavity of a graph, then what we need to do is we need to compute the second derivative and we need to determine the intervals on which it's positive and negative and then we'll be able to get this information about the graph of our function.